I'm at the Toucan Ridge Ecology and Education Society in central Belize, and we just opened up all the bird nets for a bird banding workshop. So let me explain. What we are doing is a method called mist netting. Mist nets are nets spread between two poles that birds have difficulty seeing. As such, they fly into these nets and get tangled and caught. So trained extractors are able to get these birds out of the nets safely and effectively so that biologists can take measurements, take note of what species are in that area, and also track them via a unique identifier that is engraved on a little aluminum band that is attached to the leg. You can actually recapture these birds in the future and go into a database to see where this unique identifier, this little aluminum band, has popped up in other locations. So we set up these nets the previous day, that way we could open up early in the morning for a family that had come in. In this video, I'm barely present really. Um, I don't really have experience with bird extractions and banding at this stage. Um, I did learn a little bit over the summer and I'm more comfortable with it, but I'm just not experienced enough to extract these birds safely. Instead, you'll see the ornithologist and co-owner of trees, Matthew Charette, leading this workshop. So let's get into it. So it is about six in the morning and we are opening the nets. We're gonna check them in about 20 minutes for the first net check and then depending on how many we get every 15 minutes to half an hour. So you have to watch with Rufus Tell because there's two species, which you know, I'm sure you know. Um, buff bellied Rufus Tell. The only difference is this little patch here. Oh. If it's if it's gray white, it's Rufus Tail. If it's a buffy, a beige brown color, then it's buff bellied. So I realized while editing this video that I didn't really explain what bird banding is or why we do it. And I think that is so important to understand, so I want to cover it in a little bit more detail. So at its core, mist netting is a method in which we catch birds using a very, very thin net. The net is composed of sections of netting that actually have a little bit of extra netting so that it forms a pocket. So when the birds fly into it, they go into that pocket and eventually get tangled and stuck in the net. The birds stay in the net until they get removed by a trained extractor or someone learning underneath an extractor. 
Before I go any further, I do want to talk a little bit about stress on the animals. With any method of animal capture, there's always going to be some extra stress put on the animals, and mist netting is no exception to that. So when we are mist netting, we add in a few extra precautions and guidelines so that we can minimize any undue stress, um, strain, or injury to the animal. So nets are always placed in the shade so that they're never in direct sunlight. Um, you wanna keep the birds as cool as possible. So that also means when the temperatures start to get too high, that either means you start checking your nets more often or you close them entirely. The nets are checked as frequently as possible. Um, you wanna have this balance where you're checking the nets often enough to make sure you're getting birds out as quickly as possible, but you also don't wanna be checking the nets so frequently that you're scaring away any birds that go into the nets. So what we always did was between 10 and 20 minutes. It, it varies greatly depending on the day, but that was a number that always worked pretty well for us. I mentioned this earlier, but the extractions are only done by trained extractors or people who are learning underneath an extractor if the bird is very easy to extract. Um, for me, I never extracted without someone watching me because I simply was not comfortable or confident enough with extracting bird to do it completely by myself. Anytime that we are extracting and we deem that the health or the safety of the bird is in question, we release immediately with no questions asked. So this would mean releasing any bird that was starting to look a little bit too stressed, a bird that was in the net too long, or even certain species that are really prone to stress, we would release at the net immediately. And that is one thing I always really appreciated about trees specifically. Um, they always put the individual animal over their data collection, and as a result, their injury and mortality is almost non-existent. So once you extract the birds and you've deemed that they're healthy and they're safe, you put them in a bird bag, which is essentially a cloth bag. It helps the birds stay calm and allows you to transport them very easily to the bird banding station. Once at the station, you take a wide variety of morphological measurements as well as uh, condition scores about uh, their age, their sex, how fat are they, and a few other things that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. So that's the basics of mist netting. And now, great, we're collecting this data, but so what? what? What can we do with this data? Why is it important that we're taking this? So there's actually a lot of things that we can do with this data. Um, take, for example, just the morphological measurements. You can get basic ideas of how old the birds are, um, the population structure, what is the growth rate if it's a bird you've captured multiple times, but you can also do some really unique things with birds. Take for example how to determine when the peak breeding season is for a certain species of bird. Um, one might say that you just go around listening for calls or looking for nests, and you can figure it out with that, but it's extremely labor intensive. So instead, what we look for are two things, brood patch and cloacal protuberance. So a brood patch is on a female bird and it's essentially a featherless patch of skin that they use to keep the eggs warm. The cloacal protuberance is the male counterpart where essentially their cloaca, which is where all the reproductive and excretory systems end up, that will get swollen as the breeding season progresses. So you can classify both cloacal protuberance and brood patch on a scale. And by using that scale and figuring out when you found um, the peak points of brood patch number five or cloacal protuberance number three, you can actually determine when the breeding season is. And that's just one example of what you can do with the morphological measurements taken with birds. But what about those little aluminum bands that we put on them? What, what, are, what are those important for? Well, one of the most important things that we can actually gather from those bands is very accurate data about the migratory path of individual birds. So every bird banding station around the world will check those bands, write down the number, and then upload that as well as any morphological measurements they've taken to a database. And these databases allow researchers to talk to one another and get all their data for either an individual bird or a whole group of birds. So, but, but why is it important that we know all these little steps along the way. So we, we, we know with pretty good accuracy where a bird 
starts and ends their migratory path. We know, say a bird starts in Canada, we know roughly when they're gonna be down in Panama or anywhere else in Central America. But where, what we're having a hard time understanding is all those points in between. We don't know exactly where they're stopping. And that's incredibly important. Imagine you're on a road trip. You know your start point and your end point. And you know at both of those locations, there is lots of food, you have plenty of gas, you have great places to rest. But imagine if along the way, you weren't so sure if you could find food or you could find a gas station or you could find a place to sleep. That is the information we want to find out, but for the birds. Knowing that information is critical for conserving birds. It doesn't matter if we're conserving the spot in Canada and the spot in Panama, if the area in between doesn't have suitable spots for the birds to refuel, to rest, to get more food in their belly before starting a next leg of their trek. And through banding birds, that is how we get a better idea of where these birds are stopping. That is how we know how individual birds are moving. So this was a super brief rundown of mist netting and bird banding, and I definitely glossed over a lot. There's a lot more that goes into it, and there's a lot more that we can get from it. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. With that, have a good day, and remember to always learn adventurously.